My name is Linda Farrelly. I'm originally from Dublin, but living in Rathode County Meath. I'm founder CEO of Wendever Limited, and we have produced a, an online hyperlocal communications tool that enables overwhelmed and under-resourced public safety agencies to efficiently, more efficiently and effectively communicate with their local populations during disasters such as hurricanes, uh, wildfires, dam breaches, uh, oil spills, whatever it might be. But it allows them to get down and communicate with individuals within the community or whole swathes of the community at a time. My responsibilities and day-to-day -day activities range from speaking with potentially huge clients to going back and debugging uh, through the, the issues list in, in GitHub, um, business development, producing decks, putting together paperwork. Um, it's just it's just a very tea making, chief tea maker. Um, but yeah, so that the range of activities can, can go from one extreme to the other. Um, but it's it's a very enjoyable because it's, it changes every day. You don't know what each day is going to bring, so it, um, it it can go anywhere. And I love that the unknown. Love it. I was always always a bit into tech. Um, I have three brothers who are all gamers. There was a Commodore 64 in the house. There was whatever came after them. Um, then I got into geography. I'm a big geography fan, and I did a, an undergrad in geography, and I did a master's in remote sensing. So I was always there was always tech in my learnings. Um, so obviously I just I just grew with it uh, and then with Risk Alert that came about because I realised people hadn't got a means to know what had happened whether it was a local very local issue you know a child had been approached by a stranger or whether it was a, a levee breaching and the, the village is at risk of flooding there was no real there was siren, sirens um, but there was no real way for the local agencies to you know, communicate with people to try and get them out of the way of, of, of oncoming harm. So um, that's how Risk Alert came to be. And the tech just kind of grew with me. I'm working in the government tech, the gov tech uh, sector. So unfortunately, it's it's hard to break into because there's established, there's embedded uh, systems. There's a fear of change in, in some regards. Um, so I find that it's, it's taken a lot more time than if I had a product to sell to straight to consumers. I have to go in, you have to prove your, prove your product to two parties, to the government, and all of that involves, it might be the guy who's you know, uh, facing the electorate, it might be the guy whose neck is or head is on the plate if, if it all goes pear-shaped, um, but it's also you're trying to prove it to the citizen as well that they'll have buy-in. So there's a lot of folks that have to buy into Risk Alert, um, but it's for their greater benefit. Um, but other than that, I don't see any other, like there's, there's I, I'd imagine it's as difficult as it is to break into any uh, kind of scene. Maybe a little bit more because there's legislation and there's restraints in that regard, but um, I, I'd imagine everybody finds the same, the same walls that they have to climb over and the same obstacles they have to, they have to break through. So um, yeah, I wouldn't imagine it's any harder or any easier than anyone else's sector or industry. And you just keep going until you get there. So my family and friends think I'm mad as a brush. Um, with with the whole startup, there's there's highs and there's lows, and during the lows, they might you know, sort of step around or walk on eggshells and sort of try to maybe see, set the seed for me to find work in something else or something a bit more secure. Or because everything goes into the startup, you know, you, you, at night time you're reading articles, you're listening to podcasts, you, you kind of do away with living normally um, while you're in it. Um, so. There's been a few occasions, my parents in particular would be like, maybe, you know, maybe you should just go and get a nice well-paid job and, you know, be able to live um, as everybody else does. But it, it's, it wouldn't be the same. It, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't excite me like the startup or risk alert excites me. So the sacrifice, I don't see it as a sacrifice anymore. Um, it's just what needs to happen in order to get to where I need to be. So, um, yeah, so I might be mad as a brush, but hopefully it all works out in the end. I'd recommend this job to anyone male or female. Um, you know, if you've got something that you believe is is worth following through with and worth sacrificing the normality of life um, or chasing it down because it's going to bring benefits to a large uh, population or a large number of people. Uh, and in this day and age with tech availability, you know, grants, um, the means, if, you, if you've got the opportunity to do it, if you live in a, in a place on earth, and you have those uh, opportunities around you, I don't see why you wouldn't. Because life is short, and there's no point being unhappy in your work. You know, So find your passion, find what it is that gets you up out of bed, or has you reading till one o'clock in the morning, 
um, and chase it. And, and the sense of achievement at each milestone is just, it's fantastic. It's like, Jesus, I didn't think I'd make it, but we're here now, let's go, what's the next thing to do, you know? So that, that, that drive is just, it's fantastic. It's a lovely feeling, it's almost addictive. Um, so yeah, so go out, chase your dreams, do what you wanna do.